let's go to the University of Cumbria, the, the Institute of the Arts and Colette, Colette Conroy, um, who took up her post, I think literally weeks before the pandemic hit. Is that, is that if you come off mute, yeah, is that, is yeah, that right? Yeah, yes, there was no causal relationship, I'm assured. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it was, I, I walked in, got to know my way around, and then the pandemic started, everyone went, went home and, and, and worked from home. Uh, and then I forgot everything about the, the geography of the building and the campus. And then we, it all felt brand new again once, once the lockdown eased. Um, and in that time, we had a, a huge number of programmes delivered to a huge number of students, but remotely. Um, yeah. some, some more challenging than others. But, but yeah. yes, it's been, it's been quite, quite the experience. It's also meant I've not been out and about in, in Cumbria to the extent I'd like. I am from the northwest, but I've moved here from Hull. So, so oh, um, I'm, I'm really, really pleased to be here. Thank you. And, and I need to to accelerate that process of getting to know what everyone's doing around the county. So well, you're very welcome and you've come to the right place to do that. So Colette, I think you're going to speak for about 10 or 15 minutes or so with a, with a couple of slides that you're going to share your screen on, which by all means start to do now. Thank uh, you. And then uh, I might pick up with a couple of questions and then very much people got a chance to ask as well, dogs included too. Um, so uh, we'll go through for about 25 minutes on this one and see where we get to. Um, and the floor is yours, Colette. Thank you very much. Could I just start by just getting an indication of how many people in this network are graduates of the University of Cumbria or the Institute of Arts? Um, just is it possible just to drop in the chat uh, a quick a quick um, hello or yes I am or, or, or whatever? Um, just just to see. Yep, yep. So Debbie, yep, 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 yep. Not a grant of anything. Yep, 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 yep. There's no only foundation. That's that's absolutely uh, yeah. So so people yeah absolutely. The the, the point of that I don't don't want to to, to trot through. Uh, oh yeah, brilliant, fantastic. So some 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 really um some really brilliant um uh, 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 notes here from alumni. Um, now can I get rid of my of the box here? Oh dear me, uh, the chat box needs to move down here. Um, Thank you for that. The, the reason for, for asking that question is about, it, it just, just indicates very strongly how much the Institute of Arts is not just the possession of, um, of, of, of a group of people at a particular moment, but it's actually got a, a historical uh, and, and long-term uh, set of stakeholders, uh, many of whom are, are all of you. My, is my signal breaking up? Can I can I just can I just notice that I pixelated horribly it's there? It's fine. Can I, you carry you, I'll let you know if that's, it's a problem. Oh, would you? Thank you. That's perfect. That's great. So, so one of the things that that that's really clear to me is that the Institute of Arts is something that belongs to a much wider group of stakeholders uh, than than just the people who are looking after it at the moment, who are taking care of it at the moment. Having said that, I thought it'd be really useful just to run through some of the things that I, I want to make sure people know about. Um, it's also an invitation. There are a couple of ways I would like to invite you to contribute to the work of the Institute because the Institute is here to look after the arts and culture, look after artists and creatives in the county and to build, to help to build a really sustainable arts and culture scene in the county. There's a lot of things happening in the Institute at the moment, um, and, and we're really excited about where, where we're going. But let me just very briefly, um, as, I, as I talk, um, uh, let, me, let me just show you some visuals as well, because that, that's going to be something that, that helps to give you an impression. We've not been able to have anyone over to visit uh, this last couple of years because of COVID, but hopefully that will change. We've got plans for a couple of celebrations of some milestone dates in the Institute's history coming up over the next year or so. But we're also hoping very much to involve you, as many of you as, as, as possibly can, in a programme of speakers about art that's made in Cumbria and the arts in Cumbria. Uh, so let me just talk very briefly. If you've never been into the Institute of Arts, uh, you might not know that we've got a huge number of different uh, contexts for learning. You come along as a student, you, are, you know that you're creative, you know you've got creative ideas, you might have specialisms in one subject or one discipline. Uh, you might believe that you want to be a graphic designer and suddenly find uh, that you learn how to weld. Okay, it, it is perfectly possible to come along uh, with an open mind, challenge yourself, and work across disciplines and to end up with a master's in uh, creative practice, for example, where you work 
across different disciplines. Um, if you're, you might be, think that you want to work entirely digitally and you actually spend a lot of time in the print work uh, workshop, uh, make, making your own print. Um, so it's also really important just to, to note that one of, the, one of the things about the Institute is it's quite a small institution as, as arts, art schools go, as, as art departments go, uh, but it does enable students to work together as they might uh, in industry. Uh, so a filmmaker does need to work with a graphic designer. Of course they do. A games designer uh, may well need to work with somebody who's got particular specialisms in drawing, etc. So we talk very much about the, the project-based work that students do. This may well be interdisciplinary. It may well be collaborative. We spend time obviously working indoors and working in detail on students' own portfolios and students develop their interests. Very often they're interests that they came along with, but very often they, they find that those interests change and develop. One of the things, one of the invitations to all of you is to find opportunities for students to be exposed to different sorts of art, different art forms and different artists to find people who can model for them because they may well come from backgrounds where there are no artists in their families, there are perhaps no university graduates in their families. Uh, what does it mean to be somebody who's studying the arts and who looks ahead to a potential career, earning a living through arts and culture? What else is available there? I might believe that I want to be a painter, uh, but actually then I become interested in how painting is cur curated and how to encourage and develop young people to engage in the arts. I might not know that that's what I want to do when I turn up to university, but the process of engaging through the three years of the programme or four years of the programme, depending on whether you do a foundation or not, um, is absolutely, absolutely crucial. Um, so, so this is something where, you know, it's, it's, it's not just the Institute uh, growing artists. This is, this is the whole locality growing the artists for the culture in which we live. It's my hope that we make the Institute of Arts more porous than it is to have uh, edges where practitioners come and work with our students and become colleagues uh, 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 on, on a very small, small, uh, potentially short-term basis, uh, but, but, but also that, that our, some of our members of staff who are also practitioners and artists themselves um, get to integrate further into the exciting work that's happening here. We're really very keen to make sure that students understand that there are careers in the arts for obvious reasons. We've got some fabulous partners, people we've worked with in the past very successfully, people we admire very much, um, and we're delighted to be part of a very rich culture. Um, the students need to, need to start thinking um, about, thinking in multiple ways about the ways in which they can use the skills that they have. Um, it's not always completely obvious how you would use a particular degree. However, one of the things we aim to do through placements uh, and through mentoring processes is to enable students to really imagine and develop their own place in the artistic world. So again, just, just illustrating this through, through some, of, some, some of the logos of, of, of some of the people we've worked with in the past, and, and that's fantastic. We really also want to develop um, more advisory um, panels for artists, creatives to come and help to talk to us about what they think, what they think about what we're doing. We, we obviously work very hard on trying to keep our work up to date. Technology changes and the process of change is accelerating. We're engaging in the, the fourth industrial revolution, but does what we teach our students meet the needs of the culture that we are creating together? Does it meet the needs of you as an employer potentially? Um, would it meet the needs of you, uh, of you individually as artists? But also, is there anything you need from us in terms of refreshing skills, in terms of developing particular qualifications, what, what's the ask from our local community? It's our job to uh, serve you um, and, and our students um, and, and many of you, as you have demonstrated, have been our students in the past. So, so we're absolutely here to make sure that we can get to share the work, um, the, the work that, 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 you, that we do um, uh, to, to enhance the work that you do. Um, I just want to just show you a couple of um, a couple of images of, of some of our, our staff's work. It's one of the greatest things of my job is I work with some amazing creative people. Um, so Dwayne Bell's images, he, he, he's working in, in, in illustration. Tony Peart, you may well know. I'm just gonna flick through these because um, it's so difficult to have someone sort of sitting uh, on, on a Zoom call, uh, give an impression of what is happening in the Institute, which is why I've just, oh, uh, Archie, one of our graduates, but he's also a graduate teaching assistant working with students in a kind of near peer way to help them to solve problems as they design games. 
uh, and so forth. Um, Zoe, um, who, who works in, in graphic design, some of the different sorts of applications of the skills that we teach uh, within the Institute. Um, or all of our, our, our lecturers, our practitioners, um, uh, and many of researchers as well. So, so I suppose one of the things I, I do need to tell you about very briefly is, is about the research that we're doing. Um, we're very engaged in uh, questions that, that motivate many academics, but in particular, ideas about participation and applied work, applied arts work. Um, how, how we look at, how we measure the value of, of arts and culture is one of the strands that we're looking at. We've got a very strong strand in arts and healthcare. Um, we, we've done so, some work specifically um, in dance, but, 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 but some, some other um, work where we're doing a lot of collaboration with our, with our health institute. Uh, we've got a huge amount of interest in augmented and digital um, realities and place. So, so, so that's, that's, that's an enormously big um, area that academic staff are developing in their personal research. Um, and a number of other um, uh, strands that relate to fine art practice um, uh, and place and so forth. So I'm just, um, one of the opportunities we're always looking out for, and so this is another invitation, is how to, how to enrich the, the lives of our students in terms of the, the experiences they gain. Um, our visiting speakers program is, is massive. We, we bring in lots of industry professionals. Hopefully many of you at some stage, uh, we, we'll get a chance to, to invite you to come and talk to the students. Um, we have things like our, our games jam where students from across, uh, across the region work together on designing uh, their own game. Um, student trips, really important as well. So please come to us if you've got any opportunities for students to come and see your work. We'd be delighted to try and facilitate that, to set that up. We're always looking for ways, the boundaries of experience of the people who we're working with. We haven't done as much of that as we would normally do, um, purely because of the COVID epidemic. But we're, we're up and running again now. We're sending students off all over the place. So please, if you've got suggestions for us, um, we'd be delighted. Um, we are continuing to build our placements programme. We're really interested in finding really good and exciting life briefs for our students, but also um, we've got a number of, uh, of fantastic uh, friends, mentors who help us with, with the work that we do. Um, if you believe that this is something that you could come and, and help us with, we'd, we'd be absolutely delighted. We're absolutely committed to access um, in higher education for students from all sorts of groups. We're very, very keen that students don't feel a barrier to turning up with the skills that they have, whatever they are, but with an open mind and working with them through a process of induction through to the process of working out how they show their work to the world and how they organize themselves to make a living, to plan their careers uh, and to make an impact as, in, as individual artists or as, as, as groups and companies of artists. So we, we take that on board as our job. Um, I, I, and I know that, that some of you may have been through that process uh, from walking out into the world to, to earning a living making art. Um, and, and again, if you have interest in mentoring, in talking about your experiences to students, we would love to hear from you. We work indoors and outdoors. We've got great uh, wildlife media, film, TV, um, et cetera, uh, photography, um, all, all working both inside uh, and, and outside to be turned loose in Cumbria with a camera uh, to go make a, a film is, is a great opportunity but so is the process of finding audiences within spaces, um, really important process for, for us. Um, students learn how to show their own work um, and, and design and, and organize their own exhibitions and so forth. Um, so this is something else that if, if there's work experience available in those areas, we'd be delighted. Also, you got any interest in coming and looking around, finding out what we've got, we want, we want to be able to open the door to as many of you as we possibly can. We've got great um, color and black and white dark room. We've got really good photography studios. Uh, we're very happy always to, um, to, to have guests in using the equipment, the facilities. Um, and, 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 and so one of the things that we expect, that, that, that we anticipate is, is, is that that will continue to grow, will continue to find opportunities to support um, our community uh, more broadly. Uh, so, yeah, ultimately, we're looking at the process of, of working with our students to develop their work, to put them in the centre, in the driving seat, to find out how they can expose themselves to the sorts of experiences that excite them, 
to help them to define what they want to get from their career, uh, but also to work out how, how, that, how to make that pay, how to make that work sustainably uh, for themselves. Um, and that's, um, I think I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to overstay my welcome. Um, but I'm, I, I, so I'm going to stop screen sharing. I think I've done that now um, and, and hand back uh, to you, Tom. Thank you very much, Claire. What great, um, what great images. Great images of uh, all the exciting things that are going on there, that have been going on there, and that hopefully will carry on going on there. Can I ask you, Colette, and by the way, if anyone's got any questions for Colette, now is the time to pop it into chat or to raise your hand electronically, or if you don't want to do it electronically, just wave at me furiously and I'll try and find you on the two screens. But Colette, can I just kick off? Is it mainly Cumbrians that come to the Institute of the Arts or do you have people from beyond Cumbria? Oh, we, we have people from across the UK. Um, and of course that varies from programme to programme. Uh, we do have a large number of local students, and that's fantastic. Um, across the broader Northwest, um, I would say most of our students, and in fact, it, for most institutions as well, most students uh, at the moment study within 200 miles of their home address. Um, don't, don't know why, don't know why particularly. I think that's just, just enough comfortable distance uh, from home, but, but also uh, uh, it, it, it does, does gain you a little bit of space. We have a much larger than um, industry average uh, um, group of mature students. And that's fantastic. That gives us, particularly in fine art. Um, so, so two thirds of our fine art students are mature students and those mature students are mostly local students. Uh, and, and I suppose that, that sort of makes sense uh, intuitively, doesn't it? To the sense that, that you might be um, sort of mid-career or at a particular point in your, in your family life or whatever, and you make a decision to come and pursue your, your art work um, uh, close, closer to home. But yeah, most, most, of our, um, most, most of our fine art students are local matures, which, which, is, which is really fantastic. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, the, the, uh, the one exception is our wildlife media. Uh, program which which does have students from really much further than that 200 mile uh, per, perimeter because there are only two programs in the country who okay do that. great thank you amy who is one of your alumni i believe has got a question hi amy hello uh yeah i was just interested to know if um the uni either does or will be interested in doing sort of shorter courses for adults so obviously you've got lots of good equipment to use there and it's quite a good way to get people into trying a new mm. technique like printmaking or something mm. so would yeah. they be interested in sort of yeah. little taster courses or short yeah. courses a absolutely and one of the things that we're trying to do at the moment well well short courses would also be really good for our students as well um so so you know it, it might be that someone comes in and they want to do graphic design but they want to do the printmaking for example or or, or, or you know it, it's, it's also um uh, the possibility of a uh, student who might be doing um, outdoor outdoor adventure training over at Ambleside who wants to learn how to uh, fly a drone, for, for example. So, so the, the sorts of courses, that the sorts of skills we do, we can actually turn into, into short courses. We don't have that set up um, particularly efficiently at the moment, and we want to. That's, what, that's one of the things on our plan for the next two years. If you have any thoughts about what would work, about what, where there's a gap, I'd be really grateful to hear it. Um, you know, the, the, the printmaking would be one really clear example. Um, I've been told as well that, that lots of people will be really interested in pursuing a, a little bit more high, high spec work on um, how, how, to, how to document work, how to, how to film work yeah. if, they're, if, if they're a live artist or, 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 or whatever. So, so that's um, another area, but, but I'd love to hear from anybody about, about the ask there. We, we'd be really happy with that. Thanks, Amy. Come to Andrew in a second, but Kathy asks in chat, Colette, are there plans to have some programmes as part of the new build of the Institute? We will be moving over to the Citadels um, and we will be working. Um, we've got plans for new programmes at the moment in a range of uh, digital based pro uh, digital based areas. Um, including um, games development, so an MSc uh, and a BSc in, in games development. We'll, we'll also be working uh, across user experience uh, uh, as well uh, and bringing on board a, a commercial photography programme in the next year or so. We're also going to be looking at advertising, but also building on the work and, and the students who are coming to talk to us, uh, particularly students who are doing wildlife media at the moment, they're very interested in campaigning journalism. 
And, and that's something else we're very interested in doing to build on and enhance the work that we're doing in film and TV. All of those will be based in the city centre Citadel's location, um, along with our current programmes as well. Um, we're really happy always to be in dialogue with our wider community about what else is needed by employers, what else is needed by a local artist community. One of the things we're doing is uh, making sure it's possible to study master's level programmes uh, on a modular basis for people who want to dip back in after three or four years out in the world, who want to dip back in to have a refresh of, of the, the, the work that they're doing um, just in terms of technology and, and, and to cope with the, the accelerating pace of change. Thanks. Thanks, Colette. Andrew. Uh, thanks. Uh, hi, Colette. Welcome to uh, Cumbria. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm based down in Barrow in Furness, which feels um, a very long way away from, from Carlisle, even though we're in the same county. <laughs> it does. Um, and I, I've, I've been very passionate over the last um, five or six years about the, the notion of STEAM rather than STEM <laughs> as a, a foundation for both industry and for education. Um, and I, I wonder whether there's been any discussion um, within the university because the, there's going to be a new campus in Barrow um, yes. affiliated to the, the shipyard, whether there's been any discussion around um, some involvement with the Institute or with the arts, um, possibly, I mean, I, I'm thinking in terms of postgraduate rather than undergraduate but I don't know uh, because that seems like a good opportunity to start to explore the, mm -hmm. those links between um, the arts and um, sciences and engineering but also for those people who live and work and grow up around here there's an <laughs> enormous gravitational pull towards working in the shipyard and a very negative attitude towards the arts. Um, so, it, with with, with your, amb your ambition to welcome more people into the into the institute from backgrounds that wouldn't normally encourage mm. working in the arts, it feels like there's an opportunity there. I just wonder whether there's mm. any discussion around that. Yeah. Well, short answer, Andrew. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we are very, very keen to make sure that we serve the whole county and Barrow in particular. There's a lot of activity in Barrow. Barrow also has a really distinguished history in terms of participatory arts. Um, and, and there's, a, you know, lots in the past has, has, has gone on there. We would be, we are very keen. We are planning to develop the work that we do uh, that is participatory uh, and to do that very quickly, that's a huge amount of um, support from the vice chancellor and her executive in, into actually uh, making sure that the work that we do isn't just focused on that process of teaching, uh, you know, undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. It's actually about uh, making sure that the benefits of higher education, higher education, arts education um, is, is experienced by the whole community. So, so absolutely, we will be involved in, 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 in Barrow. Um, and, and that will be something that, that, that emerges over the next year or so as in, in terms of a, a more concrete plan. Yeah, good. It'd be nice to talk to you about that. Well, well I'd love to. So, so please, please do. Would you email me and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll absolutely come. Um, I also have uh, cousins uh, who live in, in Barrow uh, and, uh, and, and so I'm always happy to pop over. <laughs> There's Thank a great Barrow much. contingent on here, Colette. I'm going to warn you now. So, so they will all hold your feet to the fire about all those things. No, that's <laughs> no, nice fab fabulous. Way. No, absolutely. My, uh, my, my, I, my family is, um, is over there, so I can, I'm very happy to, to, to pop by any point. Well, you know, all the other places where my family are not um, as well, I'm happy to go there too. But, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's good to have an excuse as well to, to drop um, in. Can I Derek, sort of bolted onto that, really. Um, Derek asks in chat, what links are there between the Institute of the Arts with Cumbrian schools? Uh, we work with a lot of schools and FE colleges. We're constantly in conversation with them. We run a, a thing called Flying Faculty, which is um, which is fab, where we take um, some some uh, academic members of staff and equipment and some of our students, uh, and and we we de develop work uh, together with with schools and and colleges. We um, we're working further on integrating the work that we do. Uh, and particularly on the process of making sure that we support schools and teachers in schools uh, with the process of develop, developing and delivering arts education. So, so that's, that's a, it's a really big strand of work for us. Uh, it 
we have had some a number of conversations about setting that up more formally, uh, and, and, and we've 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 yet to see where that where that goes. But we do we, we've got good good links with our local schools, um, and and perhaps slightly um, slightly more developed and, and nuanced links uh, or developing and more uh, 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 and and uh, and and very productive links with with our local FE colleges and sixth forms. Uh, but but anyone who has got a school that particularly would like to build a relationship, come, come and talk to us. Uh, come and talk to us we'd love to do that we're also really keen we, we've had um had quite a few schools in since we opened up after lockdown quite a few schools in to do small projects in printmaking and those sorts of things and and, and that's that's always been really exciting for us okay we'd, we'd love to do that well collect in conclusion and again if once we finish if i can invite you to put your details into chat yeah, of course. so people can contact you that'd be great um speakers i think you want you, you we've talked we talked last week when we spoke about yeah. The idea of seeing where we could get to and supporting you in terms of some sort of speakers program and you you've mentioned that you you mentioned that in your yeah. presentation yeah. just tell us a couple couple more things about that and see where we can go as an action from here so we are very keen so, so one of the things we do regularly is have research papers and research events we'd really like to open that up to to, to look at local practice and, and the notion of being uh, work that's being made in cumbria and to have uh, perhaps a series of talks over the next um, over the next year or so, just to just to start to get people to engage in a little bit of detail and depth with the work that's happening. So this is something that also came up uh, um, when we were talking about participatory uh, and, and young people's work in in the uh, local um, arts and uh, uh, education uh, network. Um, and and that's that's something that uh, that, that we, we want to we want to start to invite people to come and talk, but also to get suggestions. We also make sure that you want to, that that you're welcomed and invited to um, to that event as well to those events. The, the idea is we have a series of it's, say we have a, a weekly speaker on a Wednesday early evening, um, either live or online, um, depending on how things are with COVID and and and, and probably a, a mixture of both. Um, but to alternate that between between some of the some of the research, the the external and academic research work that's happening, uh, along with some of the practice that's happening mo more locally as well, so it's really important just to get the students uh, exposed to lots of different perspectives. But also so the staff can actually start building on their research and building research partnerships um, together by listening in detail to to what people's uh, work is or what their practice is. It might be that you know if you if you if you're interested in speaking to us, it's not that you have to you know talk for an hour. It might be that we put four or five people together for a panel to talk about a particular art form or, or, or whatever and just give everybody a chance to listen to you to ask questions uh, but also just to engage in a little bit of depth with how you perceive your practice and uh, and and challenges to to your practice and so forth just as a way of making sure that we formalize that wish to become more porous than we than we perhaps are um, at the moment so where, where might we go with that as an idea so I'd be really, really pleased to receive suggestions for panels. Um, I'd be really pleased to, to hear people who want to be, uh, who, well, we, we'll keep this network, if, if it's okay with you, keep this network up to date with, with what those plans are. Um, so we'll obviously circulate details there. Um, what I think we'll do is, is produce a call for contributions. Okay. Uh, so, so just just send this out to this group. And it might be that, that, that we curate it so that we've got four or five people um, speaking or, or presenting in a particular session. Um, but it just gives us a little bit of time to put it in that, in that context. It, it is, practice is research. Practice does help us to understand and develop our knowledge um, uh, and our knowledge base. Uh, and so it's absolutely appropriate for it to be included in the, the general um, uh, discourse of a university. So we'd be really, really happy to have, to have people um, volunteering to, to talk about their work. Um, or to have a conversation, have a dialogue with people who are working in similar or related art forms. Okay, great. Well, we'll, we'll take you up on that, and I'm sure thank you'll you. get some response from um, that, Colette. And again, if the really network and its various communications and and platforms can help you get yeah. the word out, then then absolutely we can do that. Just looking at chats, um, Helen says, talk, when you were talking about schools, connections with schools, that sounds really good, Colette. I teach at Cold You, so yep. I've Helen, got I've Helen's got details you. just now. Thank you, Helen. Okay. Yes, let's. Uh, and, and Maggie says there are some great ideas there, Colette. Sounds exciting. I think there are lots of opportunities to connect more with the local community of artists through this network and through the Evan and West Cumbria Arts Networks as well. So again, uh, thank you, Maggie. Hearing 
more from Maggie there. Okay, lovely. Well, thank you very much, Colette, for, for presenting uh, your, your thoughts and reflections and vision for the Institute of the Arts this morning. Um, and great to make a connection with you. Um, thank you so uh, much. It's not been easy the last sort of two years to get out and talk to people, so it's fantastic that we can, we can do it this way. So let's stay in touch and, uh, and hope that we make some progress on that speakers programme and other things that may well come out of this conversation. Most certainly. I'll put my email address in there. Please, please do get in touch with me. And uh, uh, and my preference is always to have a conversation um, just to, to find out a little bit more about uh, about the detailed people's work and those sorts of things. But initially get in touch and we, we can set something up if you would like to have a conversation um, and any suggestions um, or uh, would, would be really useful for um, for that speakers program. Thank you. And thanks Great. so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Colette. All right. Um, Let's move on to West Cumbria in particular, to Copeland and Allerdale, where Amy Lewis um, is one of the people working with those authorities and people connected with the West of Cumbria to come up with a new cultural strategy. And I think the ambition is to try and get this sorted uh, in the spring of this year. So Amy, over to you to tell us where you've got to and how you'd like people to help you come to the right conclusions. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Tom. Um, so I'm from CT Consults. Uh, we're a consultancy that specialises in cultural tourism, uh, heritage strategy and digital experiences within the cultural sector. And we've been commissioned jointly by Allerdale and Copeland Borough Councils to develop a cultural strategy for West Cumbria ahead of the local government reorganisation. Um, it's quite a rapid process that um, that they've asked us to complete. So we started uh, mid to late November and we need to deliver this strategy by the end of March. So we have been working at pace. Um, what we've done already is a lot of desk research. I've read just about every document going that I can get my hands on related to West Cumbria, cultural tourism, demographics, strategic investment, um, all the town deals, future high street fund plans, etc. Um, we've also completed about 30 one to one consultations. Um, some of you that I've spoken to are on this call. So thank you already for giving me your time. Uh, we've spoken to strategic funders such as Arts Council about how Copeland is a priority place, looking at the uh, creative people and places investment that they have um, secured, uh, invested in for Copeland. Um, we also, before Christmas, held a face-to-face -face workshop specifically for the, I should I would say the formal cultural sector in West Cumbria. So the likes of Rose Hill Theatre, Theatre by the Lake, um, Carnegie, um, the LEP and um, Florence Arts Centre who hosted the workshop, which was an incredible place. So we are now looking at a much wider uh, engagement process because whilst all those very strategic stakeholders are important actually, the uh, practitioners, the wider education sector, et cetera, is, is really important to making sure that those views are captured and included within this research. So we have a series of workshops coming up in a couple of weeks that you are all invited to, as well as any other individuals that you think uh, could be useful to contribute to this piece of work. So um, these, I'm going to list when these workshops are, but I'll put it in the chat as well. 26th of January, uh, 11.30 till 2.30 at Rose Hill Theatre. So that is a face-to-face -face workshop for anybody that prefers to work face-to-face. -face. Um, 27th of January, 2 till 3.30 online. And 28th of January, 10.30 to 11.30 online, straight after this meeting. So many of you might want to attend this meeting and then stay on to talk to us. So a mix of face-to-face -face online, a few different dates. Um, I will put that in the chat along with my email address, RSVP to me, please. I will manage uh, invitations and send out Zoom details, etc. cetera. Um, and then the next stage after that will be to collate all of the uh, engagement and feedback that we've had so far, start drafting and testing ideas um, throughout February, ready for a final report in March. So it, it really is quick. And so I would really value as many of you as possible or any of your associates, partners, stakeholders 
to contribute to this work to make sure that it is as representative and useful as possible, uh, useful for the likes of the LEP and the local authority, but also useful for individual practice, practitioners and organizations. Um, so that's it from me, really. I can take uh, any questions now about the, the process and the workshops, but any really in-depth questions are probably best saved for the workshops themselves, where we can really go into the, the process a bit more. Is that all right, Tom? It's fine, yeah. Do stick your, your hand up uh, now if you have any quick questions for Amy. I think it's a, a really good piece of work. Amy and I have had a conversation just before Christmas um, about the strategy. I think it's good that it's happening quickly. Yeah. I think so, sometimes strategies can drag on, let's face it. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's really positive that this is being finished rapidly. So any questions at all at this point? No, that's the local, fine. Does the local government reorganisation impact, you know, loom large in your thinking, Amy? Very, very much so. And that has been the impetus for them commissioning this piece of work. Um, it, it, there is a risk in any local government reorganisation that culture can be something that is sort of sidelined or deprioritised. So a piece of work like this and a very... Uh, robust engagement process can mean that it, it keeps it in everyone's minds and I think the process of this is as important as the product as well so making sure that we have um, I say we as in the whole whole sector have something to hold the local government to to account about so these recommendations new ways of working I think we're going to have to do something fairly radical with West Cumbria to make sure that uh, you know it, it really sticks in in people's minds and, and stays as a priority. And bearing in mind the Arts Council investment that's coming particularly into the Copeland area, it is useful to have a document like this. Um, it can really fly the flag for, for the sector when there's such a period of change. So that that is another reason why it is um, it is going through so quickly to make sure that it is all finished and everyone understands and supports it before that reorganisation happens. Thank you, Amy. Jane has a question. She's at Senhouse Museum in Maryport. Um, hi, Amy. Um, have you spoken to any uh, museums in West Cumbria? Yeah, um, so that's your stakeholders rather than just um, consulting them um, further down the line. Uh, not in a one-to-one -one, uh, scenario, um, but we have invited uh, representatives from all the museums and heritage organisations uh, where we've been able to find a contact to, to the workshops. Um, I would really, really value uh, input from museums and heritage centres. Um, so if you are able to attend that, I know you've RSVP, Jane, but anybody else, um, I would really value that. Yeah, I'm just conscious that, I mean, I signed up to one of the virtual ones, but I think I have commented, Amy, that an hour and a half isn't really very long. Um, uh, and uh, I'm just concerned that the museums in West Cumbria need to have a voice in this. Yep. Um, if you want to do a one to one, Jane, I'm very happy to do that. Or if uh, you want to organise something specifically for museums, we could look at arranging that. But um, this is this is the risk of such a rapid process is that some we don't have as much time to do as many one-to-ones and specific workshops as we would really like to um so that's why we've organized um a variety of workshops for this engagement but i i do i do understand and take your point yeah i mean i, I don't i mean i don't want to be picky about this at all because i mean we're all in this together aren't we but uh you you um your list of people who who have been consulted on a one-to-one -one basis consisted of uh, mainly theatres and art centres? No, that's that's not the not the case, Jane. We spoke to uh, all the MPs, the various uh, members from the education and community sector, um, everybody involved in the different town deals, um, some of the major employers in the area, some of the major funders. Uh, it's been a, it has been very broad. Um, a lot of different organisations as well, like. Um, Forestry England, Natural England, RSPB. So, so it was. It has been very broad so far. But by 
by being broad, that means it's not very deep. And so that's why we're now looking at these workshops with, um, with wider stakeholders, as I said. Uh, Jane, just to pick up on that, because I think it is a fair point that we need to make sure museums get a voice in there. We could send something out via the Cumbria Museum Directors Group, and make sure that something is, is getting to the museums, um, every museum. We can do that, Jane. Oh, absolutely, Kate. That's a great idea. So, okay. Yeah. Please do. Well, I'm I'm about to. Um, when we finish speaking, I'm going to type in the chat the details. Please do pass this on. Uh, you know, it, it, we worked from a list uh, provided by the local authority as well as some of our own research. It is exhaustive, and you know, I really appreciate all of your support and help to make sure the message is getting to the right people and a broad range of people. Okay. Well, we can certainly um, bang the drum a bit louder for museums, Jane, no problem. Okay, Amy, thank you. Please thank do, you. people are clamouring for the information in chat, so uh, leave good, good. that and hand back to Tom, thanks. Yeah, thanks very much, Amy. And as Amy said, the third of those workshops will be right at the end of uh, this meeting in, in a couple of weeks' time or so, so, so a nice easy way to, to stay engaged on Zoom as well. Great, sounds like it's, 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 it's building in West Cumbria. Okay, let's conclude the meeting uh, this morning with a bit of a bang and a boom though because we're going to talk science and we're going to look at the inaugural Windermere Science Festival which the wonderful Nick Greenall is pulling together and Nick I'm going to ask you to come off mute if you haven't done already and I shall pull your slides up and the floor is yours. Um, good morning everybody from uh, near Windermere. Um, so yeah the first Windermere Science Festival will be happening in March this year, originally, I did plan it for March 2020, but for kind of obvious reasons, that never happened. Um, so we, it's going to be based at across two venues, which are the amazing Windermere Jetty Museum, uh, just outside Windermere, which in itself is a piece of art. It's um, shortlisted for a Reba Prize, is a, a, a beautiful example of sort of modern architecture. What our other venue is the Old Laundry Theatre. So we have a bunch of events going on over three days. Uh, you can hit the next slide, please, Tom. So um, are we, yeah, just one at a time. Yeah, this one. So this is the wet dock within the museum. So we have a series of talks planned here. One of our themes, uh, our main theme is water. So what better place to do it than right next to the largest body of fresh water in England. Um, and some of our talks are based around that. Um, in this area, another one of our themes is encouraging girls into science. So we're doing a series of what we're calling Steminist talks. So we've got some really inspiring scientists, encouraging everybody, but particularly girls into science. Um, another th theme is that, that science is not kind of really just the preserve of the laboratory as well. It's kind of, there's lots of practical science. So we, if you hit the next slide, Tom, we've got um, Helen Chertsky, who is a, an oceanographer, TV presenter. She does um, science shambles and often on the infinite monkey cage with uh, Brian Cox and Robin Ince. And, one of her things is really using stories as a method to tell science stories and engagements and explain um, scientific ideas. I'm listening to her book at the moment as an audio book, which is called Storm in a Teacup. So she's joining us on Saturday and she's gonna talk about how she got into science, the importance of stories of science and then on Saturday evening, she's doing a kind of headline speech at the Old La Laundry Theatre, and I'll put some a link to tickets in the chat. Um, could we hit the next slide, please, Tom? We also, one of our neighbours, um, literally just across the water at Ferry Nab, is the amazing Freshwater Biological Association. The head scientist there is called uh, Louise La Victoria, and she's a freshwater mussel scientist. So one of the things I've, I've learned that is 
has been a surprise to me. There's these tiny little freshwater mussels, which are an endangered species, and they're around about a millimeter across when they're a year old. And they bury themselves into the riverbed, about five centimeters, and they stay there if they're successful for up to 130 years. So they grow to around about 12, 15 centimeters. Um, but who'd have known? So she's going to talk about that, her work with the FBA, and there's going to be some demonstrations on the Saturday as well. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, this is a picture, not of Richard Brazier, who's uh, a professor from the University of Exeter, but one of his beavers. Um, and beavers are amazing creatures. I've never actually seen one in the wild. Just stick, do stick in chat if you've ever seen a beaver. And also there's another thing I've been doing, which is, can you guess the weight of a beaver? So please do put in chat, you're preferably in kilograms, but um, we'll convert if you put it in pounds an ounce. How heavy is a beaver? Um, so stick that in chat. And there's some, I've become now a bit of a beaver bore because there's all these interesting facts. In the Middle Ages, the church reclassified beavers as fish so you could eat their meat on a Friday. Also, they have a gland down near their thigh that also was one of the reasons they became endangered because it has analgesic properties. So also in the Middle Ages, this, gland, this beaver's gland was worth more than a peasant's annual wage because of its, uh, they used it to cure toothache, etc., and of course their fur. Um, so Richard Brazier will be joining us on the Saturday evening and he's doing a talk just before Helen Chertsky. So next slide, please, Tom. We also have, um, over the weekend at the Winnemar Jetty Museum, some performances. We've got a, a local performer uh, who's a great, he's also a science teacher uh, called Dieter, and he does a character called Professor Pumpernickel. He's got a vortex cannon, he blows big smoke rings, he explains all sorts of scientific principles in a fun way. Um, the picture on screen you can see is a couple of circus performers who do a strong women science act uh, to explain uh, water molecules and, and scientific principles. They ride a unicycle and talk about the sense of gravity and all that kind of stuff. Uh, next slide, please, Tom. Ah, uh, yeah, this is uh, Professor Pumpernickel, indeed with his vortex cannon. So he's going to be uh, blowing smoke rings around um, and, and other stuff on, on Saturday and Sunday. Um, we're also joined by the Institute of Physics, who are a national body and their local branch is kind of based in West Cumbria, um, just outside sort of the Sellafield area. So they're, they're joining us to do some fun stuff. I should also say on the Friday evening, Friday the 18th of March, we're having a launch event, which is going to be kind of, it'll be a free event and it'll be kind of an introduction to what we're trying to achieve. Some of the partners will be speaking, the Freshwater Biological Association um, and somebody from Lakeland Arts. So if you're interested at all, particularly if you're a school or an organization, please do send me an email so I can issue invites to that. I'll put my details in the chat at the end of this. And um, can I get the next slide, please, Tom? Ah, okay. So on Saturday, the amazing Charlie Winnie, who is a steam wood bending artist, um, and we run a not-for-profit kind of youth program um, together. This is actually... This was a group where we had, not in education, employment and training, young people from Cumbria and the group from Finland when Erasmus funding existed. And we, we spent a kind of cultural week in the Lake District and made some crazy stuff with Charlie. He will be doing a demonstration and explaining the science between behind his art, how heat um, heats up what the lignin and the cellulose in wood and makes the molecules pl pliable 
and then able to bend and then they cool down. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see an example of his amazing work. So Charlie, um, just this autumn gone, um, made the main garden at the Royal Horticultural Society garden at Chelsea. Um, so he was on BBC One a bit with, a, it was done in partnership with a, a garden designer from the One Show. Um, he's made this amazing thing. So it was shown at Chelsea and now it's gone to a mother and baby, baby unit as well. So he's also been commissioned by Lakeland Arts to make uh, this incredible shelter that's gonna go over their picnic area. They're gonna have heated seats. So this will also, uh, you'll be able to see it uh, at the Science Festival as well. So it'd be ready for that time. Um, and can I get the next slide please, Tom? Oh yeah, so legacy is, is kind of, we would like this to be an annual thing. And what do we do? We don't necessarily just want it to be a yearly event, but we want to have maybe engagement opportunities throughout the year and schools program. We're talking with the Freshwater Biological Association about having citizen science programs where young people, school kids kind of investigate the world around them and feeds in. And then maybe the Windermere Science Festival can be a place where this learning is shared and exhibited as well. Um, okay, and, and will you go on to the next slide, please, Tom? Okay, so I can I can take questions or you can come back to me or... Is your background scientific, Nick? Well, I'd say not wholly, but I don't want that <laughs> to be... Um, a barrier. I've always been interested. So I've worked professionally. I worked in technical kind of TV and film processes. So it's always been a bit arty, a bit sciencey. Um, personally, I'm interested in like astronomy and astrophotography. So I'm very excited by the James Webb Space Telescope that's just gone up and is going to, you know, send back amazing information in a in probably in six months time. So yeah, I've got, I've got a strong in, interest in science, but I'm not a okay. scientist. Well, I think it's a fantastic sounding festival. By the way, the guesses to the beaver question range from 30 to 28 to 13.76. Thank you, George. To 50 to 12, uh, any more? Uh, uh, 15, 17, about 12, 20. What's the answer? Well, they are all good guesses. And the answer is, uh, Richard said to me, imagine an obese Labrador. So he's kind of up to 30 kilograms. They're much bigger than you think, because a, a lot of people guess, so they've got all right, four kilos, which would be like a tiny little a rabbit, but they're massive. And they can also travel up to 40 kilometers. That's more than a, a marathon overnight. So they really get around. Has so anybody seen a beaver, by the way? <laughs> Has anybody seen a beaver? Just shout out if you've ever seen a beaver. And by the way, don't don't ever yeah. say you don't you don't learn something on this call if, on a Friday morning. Did someone say yes? Yeah, me, Lorna. Lorna's seen a beaver. Lorna, where did you see the beaver? I saw one in Norway when I was kayaking in the wild. It did a, a big um like warning tail flap and scared the crap out of me. <laughs> And then I've seen them at Scot in Scotland on the at the Beaver Project where they re released them. They're amazing, absolutely wonderful. As soon as I saw them, I became really obsessed with them because they, they should just be everywhere. They're amazing. So I, they I, can see, I could I could just hear Lorna and Nick doing a kind of a Beaver quiz <laughs> one morning between them. <laughs> beaver fan club. That's something like that, yeah. All right, that's lovely. Well, Nick, thank you very much indeed. This I, I know you've put the link into chat there for people to click onto. Yeah. Um, I just say it is worth saying that a lot of the events are taking place across the two days of um, festival at the jetty are actually free. There will be some things that will be ticketed, but there's loads that you can just kind of come along and drop in, enjoy experience, suitable for primary school age upwards. So yeah, if you've got people of that age, come along and, and see what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, Sorcha. That's it sounds like a totally wonderful and new and innovative and brave new festival that we all need to support if we possibly can and very much share the news about it going on as well. 
So that's in March, uh, towards the end of March. Uh, thank you very it's much. The, Nick. Yeah, 18th, 19th and 20th of March. And do send me emails if you're at school or want to come along to the launch event. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Kate, it's 10.30. Any wise thoughts to finish with? Just that Stefan uh, came closest with the guessing the weight of the beaver. So, uh, yeah, special biscuit for Stefan. Stefan wins a beaver. <laughs> OK, but I would like on a slightly more serious note to say that uh, you'll recall if you were here last week, we announced the news that the network has been funded by uh, the NDA through the Sellafield uh, Social Impact Programme. Um, £25,000 for the next three years, and it's great to have that feeling of kind of um, stability and longevity. We, we're working really hard now as a steering group to plan to finalise arrangements for freelance staffing. We'll meet as a steering group in, uh, in the first week of February, um, and after that we'll be able to come back you, to you with more details. So if we go quiet on the subject, it's because there's just work going on behind the scenes and we promise we'll keep you posted about what's going to happen next. I would just like to also remind you that the 29th of January is a Saturday and that will be our next quarterly meeting. And there is the opportunity for us to meet face to face if you would like to do that or to join us on Zoom. We'll be sending out a booking link for that next week during the week. So please look for that. We'd love you to come one way or another. Um, and we'll be talking about sort of boosting ambition in Cumbria. So, yes, that's it from me. Thank you. It's been really interesting this morning. Back to you. Yes, thank you to Colette. Thank you to Amy. Thank you to Nick. I'm off to see Derek in the panto this evening. Next week, <laughs> uh, we're going to be a focus on Carlisle and the new things going on in Carlisle. So Will Morgan, who's been relatively recently put in charge of the old fire stations to tell us what's going on at the old fire station these days. Lots of stuff seems to be coming through on social media to me. It looks a really exciting programme. Joe Gordon is the garden, is the man behind Tribe, which is uh, the big shipping containers that have been put up uh, in the park in Carlisle. So that's now been around for about six months. We, we looked at that with Steve Dunn about nine months ago when that was just being built. So we'll be interested to see how Tribe is getting on. And of course, Steve Dunn, the world's most enthusiastic man, will be with us as well next week to hey. just make Carlisle sound fantastic. So that's Steve, Joe and Will uh, next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you again to everybody this morning. Lovely to see you all. Good luck in the cricket, England, and see you next week. <laughs>